Hey, hey, happy day. I'm in my yard in sunny California. The sun's coming out already and it's only seven o'clock in the morning. Who knew? Hey, things are going to pot here, don't you know? I'm in my yard trying to escape the sun. I got three things here to start the morning with and that'd be how to talk. I often say talk is cheap. It takes money to buy whiskey, but here are three little pieces to that. Appearance talk. That's biblical. It means that one sees something as it appears to that person. Brian talk number two is not what I say that matters, it's what you understand. Liberal talk number three, that's just stupid. You know, the NDP in Canada, that's code for communist, I think. Recently, the man said, the leader, he said, you know what, I know that we said, a group of us crazy people that we are looking to phase out the military in Canada, but that's not a good idea because they're good at carrying sandbags and they've been helpful with regard to COVID. They guard doors and rooms. And so let's keep the military for a while. You're kidding me, right? That's all the military is good for? Good bloody grief. Ah! Then in Canada, you got this green leader. Her name is something, Paul. And, and she's got all kinds of obstacles, so she says, from her party and other people because of her color. Could be because you're just dumb, but oh, it's because I'm black and everybody's mad at me and they don't like me because of my color. That race card, it's always there. I've endured significant resistance from high ranking officials in the Green Party's most powerful governing body because of my color. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, you know what, this racist thing. I mean, I get it, there is some racism out there, but mostly it's about the person. I mean, if I dislike somebody a lot and he's white, I hate them. But if I dislike somebody a lot and I hate them and they're black, I'm a racist. I, I don't know. You got to kind of dig in there a little bit. Back to this uh, NDP guy, you know, the code thing, commie thing in Canada. It wasn't that long ago when President Trump was the president and there were 250,000 deaths by COVID at that particular moment or time in the U.S. of A. And he made this outstanding. Uh, outstanding, <laughs> outlandish, pick, a, pick some wordage. He made this comment, he said, the president has killed 250,000 people. He said that, really? And now though, let's kind of analyze this. There's 600,000 people in America now that have died. And there's 350,000 additional deaths since the president has been president. And since he made that crazy comment, he being the NDP leader, stands to reason then that Biden has killed this number for 350,000 kind of makes sense to me. It's funny though that he hasn't mentioned that. He's a one-sided mentioner, I guess. It's craziness, you know, and, and if craziness had wings, Ottawa would be an airport and he would be in the plane. Just saying. Palm Springs, the police there are saying we're going to give gift cards for guns in a new buyback program. The buyback thing always amazes me, just the wordage. How do you buy something back that you never owned, right? But here's what they're doing. They're saying we're not going to ask any questions. You bring in a gun, we're going to give you a gift card for $250. $250. And it, so, so here's the drill. If, if you're a bad guy, you should go out and steal 10 guns today and, and rather than go to a pawn shop and risk being caught you take them to this buyback so-called program and you get $2,500. Pretty good night's work, don't you know? In Canada, you know, they've introduced this new gun legislation to propose buying guns back as well. There's billions of dollars buying back something they never owned in the first place. Same kind of thing. And let's all go round up a bunch of dirty old rusty guns that don't work anyway and they're worth nothing and take them and say, hey, stupid people, why don't y'all buy them now? Vermont, back to the uh, mixing things up here today, but you can keep up, right? Uh, with regards to color and racism, you got Vermont. They're opening up this uh, COVID vaccine eligibility to anyone over 16 years of age, as long as you identify as black or a person of color. <laughs> Another racist thing. What about white folk? I, I, I mean, you guys can just, y'all go and die and we're going to look after other people. It shouldn't be about color. Good grief. If you're going to do it over 16 years of age, that says it. 16. That's your barrier. That's your thing. But now you got to be black? Ugh. British Columbia. Lots of topics here, but you know what? These are topics that maybe y'all can have a takeaway and say, I can help fix the world someday because these are crazy things that are going on and we need to sit back and look at them and say, hold it here. <laughs> maybe we can do things differently or encourage or influence somebody else to do them differently as well. In British Columbia, five people 
die each and every day from fentanyl. Five people. The dealers get a couple of years in jail and they're out in a few months, right? I, I mean, okay, what's going on here? And now you got COVID, you got good, honest people that have been locked up for a year. These guys, these people, it, it's murder. It really is murder. They, they, they sell fentanyl. They know that the percentages are such that many people will die. And they get, they're out in six months. <laughs> you have seniors and other people in Canada, particularly, that have been locked up for 12 months, 13 months, actually. And, and they didn't do anything bad. These are good, honest people. They pay taxes. And they don't kill people. And COVID has a 90 some odd percent, a high percentage rate of recovery. So let's, let's kind of do the bouncing act on that. How about there isn't one? And, and then, in, you know, and then you got homeless people. And, and you got in BC, I'm talking Canada today because I'm astounded at some of this stuff. Every country astounds me, but Canada's the astounder today. They're, the governments are buying hotels. They've recently bought the Ramada Vancouver Downtown Hotel to house homeless people and other people. They bought the Howard Johnson on Granville Street. They bought the Buckin Hotel. There's a long list here. They're in the hotel business, free enterprise with communist governments. Good heavens. Right addition. That's me. We have never received, nor will we ever ask for any subsidies or government money or voluntary support of you, the viewer, nor do we sell advertising to help finance our efforts. Our only special interest group is the right versus the wrong. To cause awareness and to encourage solutions, Right Edition is funded by me. I am a patriot. I hate bullies. I ain't that bright, but I'm here to help, and I hope I do. People have said, who are you? <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time. This is my hobby, my hobby website. I get to vent, and hopefully there's a takeaway that'll help the country and who am I? I my name is Brian, Brian Loving, and, and uh, just hanging out and I second that emotion. Hey, y'all come back. See ya.